The environmental industry is looking for entrepreneurs, people with ideas, innovators, and ways to move ahead. Here in the upper Midwest, it's a wonderful environment, but only if you know what you're doing. Welcome to Next Business Success. My name is Lynn Hinderocker. I'm visiting with Michael Shanka. He's in the Nebraska area. He's an expert and a veteran in the energy conservation industry. Michael, thanks for joining us. Thank you. You bet. You know, we're all interested. We've heard about the green industry. There's got to be a million ways to make a buck if you're a smart individual and uh, and ambitious and looking just a little bit ahead I is that the correct take on the green movement it's partly accurate like everything else with potential the potential is always there yeah but every month you got to make a payment yeah. you, and and so if the money's not there on a systematic current basis no it's going to be misleading to you to think that way okay so there is a blue sky scenario or a green sky yes. scenario, as we should say, but it's it, a lot of it's kind of out there. Is that what you're trying to tell me? I think you have to be observant and find your niche. Mm -hmm. And if you can find that right spot where there is a revenue stream coming in on a consistent basis, then I think you'll be successful. All right, well, let's talk specifically about uh, a couple, two or three categories of business opportunities or careers or vocations. For instance, maybe existing uh, uh, businesses or consulting jobs within existing industries. Give me some examples of that. Well, let's say an existing industry, you would be an energy consultant, for example. Yeah. And I have a good example of that. Uh, let's say recently I went to a pizza shop, and I looked at how they use energy. And mm -hmm. that's where you're always going to start. Where are the bills? How much are you spending? Where are your energy consumption most effectively? Where can that be reduced? Mm -hmm. So we looked at, the, they have a big pizza oven in the pizza shop. <laughs> it's radiating energy. It's in it, and it goes right up the flue. Well, in the... In the winter time, when you have a high demand for heating, right. it'd be nice to put a heat exchanger up there so that you could capture some of that heat for the space in the building uh -huh. or for making hot water for the facility. Okay, so those are kinds of like practical applications, things that people can do something about, right. and you make a living just by consulting with them and telling them, kind of steering them in the right direction. Exactly. Whether it's on a small business, a company, a house, a large industry, up and down the line, people are going to be taking more closer looks at yes. this energy issue. For instance, uh, um, like doing the energy audit or going inside of a home, just trying to tell people how to weatherproof their home and kind of gauging how much money they could uh, save in their monthly uh, heating bills, right? Or exactly. conditioning bills? Yes, exactly. All right, good. Um, what about some other applications, maybe some new jobs? I mean, what if the cap and trade legislation really takes? Isn't there going to have to be a need for auditors or uh, um, people that have a statistical or a taxation background and, and go to factories and tell them how much uh, they're going to be taxed if uh, they continue to pollute. Yes, exactly. There will be new businesses and new job opportunities coming. Some of these will be artificial to the market. They can come and they can go quickly. Ah. But I think something like cap and trade is a good example of one that will be sustained. Okay. Because there is an industry need. You have to get energy efficiency built into the economy and sometimes you can't do it with current market mechanisms so you need to create artificial market mechanisms in order to prompt that initiative. Okay, that kind of leads us to the whole carbon offset uh, environment which I know has been uh, couched in uh, uh, controversy a little bit, a lot of misunderstanding. Uh, the whole principle about offsetting your, your carbon footprint. But mm -hmm. I know there are a lot of people out there that are interested in, in uh, uh, putting up websites and uh, collecting your cash and then funneling that money into uh, ecologically correct uh, businesses or activities like wind turbines and so on. Is that uh, a, a legitimate way to uh, capitalize on the green movement? I think it will be. I, I think just like anything else, as it develops as a trend, right. there will be new opportunities for those who are observant to be able to place themselves within that stream. As the revenue develops, you'll be able to capitalize on it and actually develop a business. Now, new jobs, for example, that don't exist today, that right. are coming online, are something like sustainability coordinator. Huh? There isn't such a thing before. I like that title, Sustainability it's a, Coordinator. It's a great title. Yes. <laughs> and you can maybe go into a company and say, hey, I've been trained and hire me as a consultant and then work your way into the, uh, you know, into the mainstream, work your way into the payroll as a sustainability consultant, right? Exactly. And the reason they need people like this is it's a horizontal view through the entire company about how energy affects the company, it, whether it's income today or tomorrow. And you, the sustainability part is, what are we leaving behind for our children? Ah. 
And so companies are taking this look on a, on a broader horizontal scale, and they're creating opportunities in the process. Exactly. Almost like when Deming came out in the, in the 80s with the quality, the total quality movement, and they were consultants that were quality consultants. That's right. And they had the same kind of swath of uh, responsibility yes, and, and, and influence. And I can see the sustainability uh, consultant fitting into that same mode. Mm -hmm. What are some other ideas? There are so many different things. This thing just seems to be getting big. What about the ethanol industry and the, and the biofuels industry? What about recycling? Is it, is it down the tubes uh, with the economy? Or is there a next step for uh, a bright, uh, ambitious entrepreneur in any of those arenas? Certainly. In the ethanol industry particularly, there'll be some changes to the mechanisms of how it's processed. These will create right. jobs as the industry literally retools to get from a primary a corn or, or one feedstock source to multiple feedstock sources within the processing of the, of the product. So that's an engineering kind of a It's an a engineering situation. product, but then you've got to actually build it. Yeah. And then you have to maintain it. Yeah. And then you have to be yeah. able to modify it in the future for new changes. Sure. I could, I could see that as being a real sophisticated entrepreneurial business right there. I retool ethanol plants so that they can work with uh, corn stalks or switchgrass or whatever. Sure. Certainly. Yeah. And, and those, unfortunately, are very capital intensive. So yeah. there will be movements within companies to do that, and the dollars and cents are simply going to have to be there to be effective. On a, take it home to a smaller basis. Right. Let's say many of these jobs are, are just now, they're becoming greener. Uh, but there is always people who insulated a house who put in siding with insulation behind it, who put in new windows. Yes. Those kinds of crafts are still meaningful and still important, but just now they've got green tagged to it a little bit. So And they do have to be trained or certified. I mean, a lot certainly. of them have to learn how to do something slightly different. Even if they already know how to put siding on, now they have to know how to put uh, energy efficient windows in or whatever, right? Right. right. Okay. There'll be some new applications in more sophisticated arenas, uh, and not saying that the crafts are not sophisticated sure, because sure. they are, but I, I mean simply like the levels of, uh, of accounting as you, if, as you commented on, because these market mechanisms are going to create new opportunities in business, and it's not fully understood today. There may be unintended consequences in how that works, so the economists are going to okay. have to do some research on that. So it creates some job opportunities, grant opportunities for academic institutions ah. and things like that. Well, Mike Ashanka, thank you very much. You're a, a solar energy expert in the Omaha, Nebraska area, been around the alternative yes. energy industry for 20 years or so. And so we've learned a lot right here. I knew there were a lot of opportunities, but I wasn't quite sure where to point uh, many of the viewers here on Next Biz Success. Thanks for joining us on Next Biz Success. Now you know what the lay of the land is in the green industry. It's not always what it seems. You have to look carefully. Make sure you jump into the stream at the right point. Thanks for watching us. Keep on going. Keep on growing.